This is um, some examples of the types of data. Apparently some of you are having difficulty making decisions about whether it's quantitative discrete, quantitative continuous, or actually qualitative, and then as well as the levels of measurement. I hope that you've watched the, the video and reviewed the PowerPoint and extra notes that were provided um, in Module 1 under Lesson 2. But I want to walk through these and maybe you can get a sense of the thought process that you need to use when you're trying to answer these questions. So number one says the weights of supermodels. So I'm going to think to myself, what kind of responses would I get if I walked up to a supermodel and said, how much do you weigh? Well, she's going to reply, you know, maybe 110 pounds or 115 pounds. So in that scenario, I'm, she's going to respond with a number, which makes means that it is definitely quantitative. It's a number. Quantitative has the word or is the adjective form of the noun quantity. It almost has that idea, that sense of counting. So if it's a number, it's going to be quantitative. I then have to decide if it is discrete or continuous. In this scenario, typically when we state our weights, we state them as whole numbers. However, they could be, um, you could weigh ha be half a pound. Um, when infants are born, we think about it as six pounds, six ounces. So that actually means because you actually are using some sort of measuring tool that is going to be continuous. So weights would be quantitative and continuous. In terms of whether it's going to be nominal, ordinal, interval, or ratio, I know because it is quantitative that my only two options are interval and ratio. So then I want to think about what would it mean if a supermodel weighed zero pounds? Well, if she weighs zero pounds, that implies that I don't have anything. That implies none, that there's not a supermodel. And so that, so because it implies none, it would be at the ratio level. So the weights of supermodels, typically the weights of anything, are going to be quantitative, continuous, and at the ratio level. Number two says the genders of professional athletes. Again, as you read the scenario, you want to think about what kind of response you would get if you walked up to a professional athlete and said, what's your gender? Now, gender here in this case is defined genetically, so you're either male or female. You're going to get a response in words, since it is words. It's going to be qualitative. Again, if you look at that word, it's an adjective form, but it almost contains the word quality. Um, and if you want to think about quality, it's a characteristic and it's in words. So typically, if you're going to get words, it's going to be qualitative. Furthermore, if it's qualitative, then it's either going to be nominal or ordinal. The word nominal simply means name, and the connotation there is there's no sense of order. It's just a label. Ordinal has contains, almost contains the word order, and so it would, it has that sense of order to it, although it is open to interpretation. So genders would actually be nominal. They're just labels. Being female is not necessarily better than being male or vice versa. So it's simply at the nominal level. Number three, the number of eggs that hens lay. Well, hopefully the phrase jumps out at you and leaps off the page because here it says number of, which implies we're going to be counting. And when you count something, you have numbers, which makes it quantitative. And then you want to think about, is it discrete or continuous? Again, typically when you think about 
counting and you're going to count eggs in this case, you're going to have one eggs, two eggs, three eggs. We don't really think about having one third of an egg or a quarter of an egg. It's an egg or not. So you don't have any parts or fractions. And typically when we count, we count by holes. And so that makes it discrete. Again, because it's quantitative, then I know that it's either going to be interval or ratio. And so I want to think about what it would mean to say that the hen laid zero eggs today. Well, zero eggs, again, if you think about it, would mean the hen did not lay anything. It laid none. It laid nothing, which means this is going to be at the ratio level. Okay, number four. Number four says the amounts of milk. And again, hopefully that word amounts kind of jumps off the page at you because that implies, again, that sense of counting or measuring. And when we count or measure, it's going to be quantitative. It's going to be numbers. So it's numbers. But with measuring milk, we could wind up and have maybe half a gallon or a pint or a cup of milk. So you could have parts or fractions of a gallon. So typically when we're measuring, that is going to be continuous. And again, because it's quantitative, I need to think about what it would mean to say the cow produced zero amount of milk today. Well, if a cow produced zero amounts of milk, that would mean that it didn't produce any, it produced none, it produced nothing. And if zero means nothing, it's ratio. Number five, survey responses of yes, no, and undecided. Okay, so you all at some point in your life have probably taken a survey and you have to mark yes, no, or undecided. Notice those are words. Your options are yes, no, and undecided. Those are words. So this is qualitative. Answering yes is not necessarily better than answering no. They're just words, uh, perhaps based on your opinion. But this again would be at the nominal level because one is not necessarily better than the other. Saying yes is not better than saying undecided. Saying undecided is not better than saying no. Number six, the current temperatures in the 50 state capital cities, okay? So temperature is usually measured using a thermometer, okay? So since I'm measuring, I'm gonna get a number, which makes it quantitative. And again, because I'm measuring, it's gonna be continuous, although it's not usually reported as, say, 72.5 degrees, Fahrenheit, um, you could have half a degree or a quarter of a degree or part of a degree. So again, because you're measuring, you have that sense of continuity or continuousness. Um, again, because it's quantitative, it's either going to be interval or ratio. Again, you have to think about what it would mean to say that the current temperature in say Alaska is zero degrees. In that case or in that scenario, zero degrees does not in any way mean or imply there's no temperature or no heat. It's a measurement. It's a temperature that exists. So temperature is at the interval ratio or at the interval level of measurement because Zero does not imply none or nothing. Number seven, 
movie ratings where they use a one star, two star, three star, or four star rating. Okay, so instead of using, you know, PG or whatever, or good, bad, or whatever, they're using stars, and you have one, two, three, or four, which you may think, oh, those are numbers, but it's really just a way to label something. They're not necessarily being used to count or anything like that. So again, this is considered qualitative. It's just a label for the movie. And because it's qualitative, it's either going to be um, nominal or ordinal. This one again has a sense of order. Having one star would be worse than having two stars, or we could say four stars is better than having three stars. So because there's a sense of order here, this is ordinal. Ordinal. Again, ordinal, as I pointed out to you earlier, almost contains the word order. So you want to think ordinal has order. Number eight, the colors of cars driven by college students, such as red, black, blue, magenta, mauve, and so on. Okay, so I'm going to walk up to you and I'm going to say, what color car do you drive? And the response you give me is going to be a word or a phrase. So this would be qualitative. And the other thing to think about or remember about qualitative data, you don't calculate with qualitative data. We don't add words together. Okay? So qualitative data, we don't perform any kind of calculations. Because it's qualitative, it's either going to be nominal or ordinal. In terms of the color of a car, having a white car is not necessarily better than having a black car. Having a black car is not better than having a red car. Okay, so there's really no sense of order to it. So this would actually be nominal. Number nine, the years 1000, 2008, 1776, 1492. They're years, okay? So I would say because they're numbers and we can add and subtract years because I could tell you that, you know, there are 1,008 years between the year 1000 and 2008. We could talk about how many years there are between 1776 and 1492. Okay, so it is quantitative. And typically when we state years, we state them in terms of whole. But you could have part of a year. So, and in some cases, you could debate, I suppose, whether it's discrete or continuous. We typically state it as a whole number, but it actually can be broken down into smaller units. So we could argue that it's continuous. Either way, if it's quantitative, it's either going to be interval or ratio. Here again, thinking about what it would mean to say the year it is year zero. For year zero, that does not mean there was no year or that nothing existed. It's at the point where we started to count. So this would be at the interval level of measurement. Number 10. Prices of college textbooks. I hope you realize prices are stated as numbers. Because they're stated as numbers, it's definitely quantitative. And here again, we could debate whether you think it's discrete or continuous. Typically, prices, it might, you know, it might be something like $79.99. So you have cents. Um, or it might be, you know, like uh, 137 and 67 cents. You have the, the idea of cents. So you have, have decimals, but with money, we always round it to two decimal places or to cents. So most places think that, that money is discrete because even though it has a decimal, it's rounded to what we would 
think of sort of like as a whole number. Because it's money, we have to think about whether it is dis interval or ratio. So we want to think about what it would mean if I said the price of the book is zero dollars. If the price of the book is zero dollars, that means I'm not paying anything for it. It's free. I'm not, I'm paying nothing or none. So it would be at the ratio level. That's typically true of money. Salaries of women who are chief executive officers of cor corporations. Here again, with salaries, we're dealing with money. So it would definitely be quantitative. It's going to be a number. Salaries are usually rounded to the nearest dollar. So again, we could argue, but it's probably, I would say it's discrete. And again, thinking about interval or ratio, I would again say it's ratio because zero, if I say the salary is zero dollars, that basically means the woman's working for free. Now, number 12 is a little bit tricky, okay, because probably what jumps out at you immediately when you read number 12 is numbers on the shirts of marathon runners. And you see the word numbers. And so you automatically go to it being quantitative. But there again, think about it. With that number that somebody puts on their shirt when they're getting ready to run a marathon, is that a number that we would perform calculations with? Would we add the numbers together? Would we multiply them? Would we put them in some sort of... Um, order to say this number is so many less than that number. And typically we don't. Those numbers are just being there as labels, as a matter of tracking the runners in the race rather than keeping up with their names. So in this case, even though it says numbers, this is really qualitative because it's being used as a label. We don't add, subtract, multiply, or divide with those. The numbers, again, on the shirts, there may be some sense of order to it because, you know, probably the first person that checks in gets number one and so forth. So there again, you know, we could debate it. But again, really, honestly, it's being used as a label. So it's really just nominal because whoever gets whatever, whoever gets that number, it's just purely random. So it's just nominal. Number 13. The weights in carats of diamond engagement rings. So you could have, again, you have weights. So you're measuring. So you're going to have numbers, which makes it quantitative. And, you know, we could have two and a half, uh, three, two and a quarter. So you could have parts. And again, because you're measuring we typically associate that with continuous. Then in terms of whether it's an interval or ratio, if I say that the weight of the diamond engagement ring is zero carats, kind of means you don't have a diamond. And so that means none. So we're talking about, or it would be at the ratio level. Consumer report. Number 14, Consumer Reports Magazine Ratings of Best Buy, Recommended, and Not Recommended. Okay, so the responses you're going to get when you conduct, when they conducted this survey, even though it's considered a rating, the, re the responses you're going to get are words, which means it is qualitative. But in this sense, you do have... Um, a sense of ranking because not recommended is worse than recommended and recommended is worse than Best Buy. So you do have that sense of ranking. So this is going to be ordinal. Okay, a few more. Social security numbers. Here again, it may jump out at you and you say, oh, that's numbers. It's got to be quantitative. But again, think about whether you're going to calculate with those numbers. Do we order those numbers? 
And quite honestly, we don't do that with social security numbers. I don't add social security numbers together or subtract them or multiply them. Again, social security numbers are used by the government to track you and the jobs you have and making sure that you pay taxes. So again, it's being used here in this sense, even though it's a number as a label, which means it is qualitative. Here again, I suppose we could debate it, but really, again, it's just nominal. They're randomly assigned. There is a little bit of a pattern to the numbers of why they are what they are, but overall it is nominal. 16, the number of yes responses received when 500 students are asked if they've ever done binge drinking in college. So somebody goes around, comes up to you and says, have you ever done binge drinking in college? And you are going to respond either yes or no. And then ultimately you're going to count how many yeses you have. So your responses are qualitative, but you're counting. So the fact that you're counting the number of yeses is going to make it quantitative and it's going to be discrete because you can't have half of a person. And it might be that I have zero yes responses. Zero yes responses would mean I had nobody say they had done binge drinking, which means we're at the ratio level. Number 17, a movie's critic classification of drama, comedy, and adventure. Again, notice there you've got words, drama, comedy, and adventure. So they're words, so this is going to be qualitative. The classification there, drama, comedy, adventure, it's based upon, you know, what takes place in the movie. So there's really no sense of order to it. Sometimes you might see it listed alphabetically, but there's really no sense of order. So it is at the nominal level. Number 18, a movie's critic ratings of must see, recommended, not recommended, and don't even bother. Here again, the responses are words, you know, must see, you got to go see this movie or don't even bother go see in this movie. So you're getting words. It is qualitative. But in this case, you have a sense of order because must see is going to be better than recommended and recommended is better than not recommended. So you have that sense of order or ranking to the different ratings or categories. And finally, the last one, we kind of come full circle because we're back to weights again. Weights, again, are measurements, so you're going to get numbers. So it's definitely quantitative. You could have part of a pound. So you have continuous, again, because it's associated with measuring. And if you say the person weighs zero pounds or zero grams, and that means you don't have a person. Okay? So I hope you find this helpful as I kind of walk through some examples and talk through them with you or for you.